I have an interesting analysis for you. The story is told about Mau Mau. What has been regarding a Shagwa speech in Mount Kenya? I have seen regarding a Shagwa taking a walk to the top of mountain to make a divine prayer. And he said that one is praying for the land, is praying for rainfall, and also for President Ruto for economic transformation of the region and of the country. And the fan made a very interesting take that then the deputy president should then pray facing Lake Victoria for it to produce enough fish for this country. Also visit Indian Ocean because it's a point of entry for this country and Kakamega Forest as well as other regions to make it beyond gamer patronage. This is the bold analysis. My name is Kevin Odwar. In Geshekwa's, regarding Geshekwa's diary, one of the top in that list is how he will completely dash off Uhuru Kenyatta and become the new Mount Kenya kingpin. And even an effort to reunite with Uhuru, reunite him with Uhuru, has backfired. And in this analysis, I will tell you why that was very that, that was very necessary in the process of that kingpinship. This has seen as fanatical invoking of the Mau Mau struggle because he is a descendant of Mau Mau. However, I have seen, I have been taking time to speak to eminent persons from that region and they have really given me a very interesting revelation of key aspects because the only thing I wanted to know is how does the Mau Mau tag have a big spark in the mountain. Let me tell you, Regade is not doing this for the first time. Just take a moment to listen to what he said when he was asked by the journalist about the Mount Kenya tour. This mountain has a healing effect among our people. It is a symbol of resilience. It is a symbol of victory. When things are very difficult and you come to this mountain, you get encouraged that you'll mount there. You'll mount whatever challenge that is there. I ask many people to come here and pray. Not that because we are praying to God that he lives here in the mountain. No, God is in heaven. But this mountain is a symbol of resilience. It's a symbol of struggle. It's a symbol of victory. So whatever challenges that we have, as a region, as as Kenyan people, from the foothill of this mountain, if you come here to pray, facing directly the mountain, it will inspire you. It will give you conviction that victory is on the way. So for the challenges that we have, I'm sure many Kenyans... That's a glimpse come. of what Regade said. But I want to pause there for a minute and tell you... Um, some of the key aspects on this issue of Mau Mau. It, was, it is being used to show the might and how strong he is. And just to make you understand, I know um, that this is something that had a trial even at the time he was to be named as running mate. When things became thick in Karen and after voting, it emerged that Kidiki was the pick of the members of parliament that voted in Karen. We experienced some protest in Nyeri. And the point of you cannot play, or rather you cannot joke with descendants of Mau Mau, that was the first time that conversation that came, or that discussion came into the light. And while that moment Regarding Ishag was successfully used it to show who he was. It is named after Field Marshal Tedan Kimathi, the hero of our liberation struggle. The Field Marshal 
who led the battle in the Abadeas and Mount Kenya to drive the British colonialists and the home guards and the Comereras and the Tukunias out of our land. My parents were in the forest under dead and Kemadi. We are very emotional about this institution. I want to give you a reminder and allow me to call my good friend Jackie. He once told, she once told me that Kevin, descendants of Mau Mau are suffering despite of their forefathers fighting for the land. When they came out, came back from the struggle, the elite politicians, some of them were denied and in fact the land they fought for never benefited them. But because of that blood, there is also an understanding that quite a number who I was told I can take you to Nyeri, one day I'll go to Nyeri before this month ends. And I'll take you to Nyeri and show you this and that are descendants of Mau Mau and despite of some of them being that they got an opportunity to be schooled and became learned, but things have never been good on their side. It is, I want to look straight to the eyes of anyone who is from Gema, that an understanding, or rather one of the reports that I gathered here is, and you can help me confirm, that there are descendants, people from the families that were in Mau Mau, that are suffering. And the story about them being in my mouth, the only few that get to understand and appreciate are the only ones that are privileged. And the privileged are few. But then it is being put to the young people who may be green about what exactly the Mau Mau concept is about for them to belong to a specific, to create a specific euphoria. Now, the claim of land grabbing by elite politicians has been subsequent and even after Kenyatta won regime, less has been, has, has been done. And there is a perception that subsequent regimes turned a blind eye on them. So the point here is that Regadi's tag on it seems to lack a spark. Recently, Kimadi's widow asked Regadi to fulfill a promise of making sure that Kima, uh, didn't Kimadi's remains, who the British uh, administration believe, or rather according to reports from both British, British administration and the Kenyan government, that the remains were buried somewhere in, um, in committee maximum prison. The widow, uh, Mukami, despite Mukami Kimadi, who was being interviewed and saying that her health was deteriorating, and she's saying, she said her death is imminent. But she asked together that please bring me the remains of my husband so that I can rest in peace. I am just telling you this, and I'm using that example because it's one that is all over in public. So that has not been fulfilled. But do you also know that apart from Mwai Kibaki, and I want you to get it right, that I gathered the story that it's only Mwai Kibaki that helped Kimadi's family by then. And uh, the mother was actually to be uh, lifted from Kinangop here to Nairobi, where she received, the, the, they paid medical bills and they got some support. So what are we saying? I am simply telling you that there is less that has been done by the previous regimes that can show or that can give the generation, the real descendants of Mau Mau, a touch, a feel that indeed it is something that they fought, they fought for and they have the bragging rights with it. It is not new and it may be a little bit choking to regard it, but this is it. I want you to, if you look at that headline, that is a story that I read some time back. UK Museum agrees to return looted Benin bronze to Nigeria. This is after community and Nigerian government um, asked the UK government to return back the bronze. And a London museum agreed to return 
A collection of Benin bronzes looted in the late 19th century from what is now a Nigeria as cultural institutions throughout the Britain came under pressure to repatriate artifacts acquitted during the colonial era. That is what I'm talking about. There is, apart from even that, Kimadis, there are less that has been done by other subsequent uh, governments to show that they indeed care for descendants of Mamao. It may be politically right to use it as a motive factor because, you know, it's something that is common and it arouses the emotions. But when you put it on the table, do you really have the spark with it? And without going far, I want you to look at the man in your screen. The man in your screen is the only person that have used, not even used, that the story of that man has been consistent with the struggle. So when you talk about the struggle, and when, 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 when like many people still understand, feel when the man in your screen says that I was detained for nine years, and it was part of the struggle, Part of the film that we enjoy here, he was part of that struggle. The man we're seeing there never buried the mother when the mother passed on. The man we're seeing there saw it all during the time. So he's a person that his story has been out there. I am trying to compare that to regard this story of Mau Mau. And even me critiquing for that picture, you'll we'll actually see a totally big difference between the two, that while you want to use it to show that we're in the Jagina, you are the fighter of the moment, that you are strong, but it lacks the spark. That's what I'm saying. Um, many see Osorigabe as a man who is from dynasty, who was from advantaged family. Tracing his political career with the Mau Mau story is a total order. And apart from what is being said, it's, it's comfortable to say, descendants, I was the grandchild of X, Y, Z. But the current generation, for you to use it successfully, you must have grip of what it is. I may be wrong on this, but do your research and also and find out more about it. And this is why it's not as simple as it has been used. Before Uhuru Kenyatta left, he ordered for the ending of stop, ending of the celebration, annual celebration of the founding father, who remains, um, and he said that it is time that Muse rests and puts an end to that. So what does it mean? For the Gandhi to crystallize the Mau Mau story, it cannot start anywhere apart from the first father of the country, Kenyatta one. And so, this is the man or the other family that he has defamed at the campaign trail and is stopping still at nothing to defame, saying that that, of course, is what has been done. So while it can be successfully, he can successfully try to put it, but he has to cut an image of someone that is fighting for the rights of Mau Mau descendants, because those are the people that are suffering. I was getting shocking revelations of Kevin I know of a grandchild of someone within from a Mau Mau descendant who I'm a summer and has the papers, no job, and things are just bad. In fact, um, it has led to a bit of spiritual cleansing that for you even to make, because he down with him one word, for even to make, if you don't make take spiritual uh, root, you cannot make it out. Guys, kindly subscribe to our channel. I want you to listen to these three aspects. What exactly 
makes it difficult, the Mamut. Mamu is documented in the books of struggle. And the books of struggle is well documented with the cultural aspect. As we talk now, the Gandhi Geshagwa and William Ruto decided to go the church route, the church council. So after that, God power, and I want you to listen to a clip by uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's cousin saying that members of the church and there was an event where they went to bury some I think, I think some elder in, in Kiambu and there was a scaffold between the Kiama and the church team. Both are fighting for who is supposed to be dominant. And the church council is emerging as a dominant force. Remember the wife is from the church council. So what we are simply saying here is this, that the church had started vilifying the Kiama team, and Kiama is what the Njambas, the warriors below, warriors are now, the regard is below now, come from. So at the right time, he will have to make a choice that the Mau Mau tag doesn't go along with the church. Guys, I, I, I captured that and you can challenge me and I really want a very strong point from people in that place. Number two, Mamou the defendants whom many are from the areas of Kiambu, parts of Muranga and the Nyeri and there is a spillover to the areas of, um, of Laikipia are languishing in poverty and have over time blamed elite politicians of benefiting from their sweat, their sweat. The old people understand the story, but the young simply take political euphoria. It's not a sustainable one when it's not political. When, when you make it political, when you pay some few people to chant and say and all this story about Mama, it works. But when you sit down to tell it to the rest of the nation, it doesn't go. You don't, you actually lack the spark. Uhuru had it. And Uhuru had the spark. And someone was even telling me that a decision by President Uhuru to support Raila was a deep. And he had to cut the ties because owing to what Moses Kura speaking about those ties and so it was impractical and it was not expected of president of root of Uhuru to do that. But being the good man he was and he wanted to break from those, he decided to support Raila Dinga. So people who understand this deep can, can, can explain. But I, I remember being told that, that if it was not in order and it had to take that direction, then this is lastly where I'm telling you that that spark with Rigadi will not upstage Uhuru. President Ruto is a man that wants to elope on the new generation and at the campaign time, they successfully told off Raila Odinga that don't tell us about the stories about the past. And Raila was saying that let us tell our people where we are coming from so that they can understand. Raila had that story. Mamo is just a struggle story. Raila had the struggle story. Now, the struggle story was subdued at that moment, and William Ruto, with Rigedi Gashagwa, successfully subdued that message that it was not time for it. So, much will not be done. As much as Rigedi would want to sustain that, he will not get a bit of that support from his boss, because that is not his line of thought. And just to show you, look at how Jamhuri the event was done. We successfully suppressed the struggle of our national um, uh, story and decided to pick the internet and the technology story. So that was successfully done. And, and I've always said there was nothing wrong with making it innovation so and so. That is the mind, that is the direction that William Ruto is taking. And there was no problem. We could still do it another day. 
no problem. But successfully, we took a very important event to suppress the story about our country. How will Rigari then survive with a party or a boss who doesn't want to hear of the past story about the past? I am meant to understand that Hurgarins, which is a custodian of bit of our struggle story, the president is yet to step there in public. And maybe <laughs> he's part of suppressing that. What the Gadi needs to do for that, that tag Mau Mau to survive, he must be part of that story. And the best now is to make sure that at least they get something. He must show that is after, after their welfare. Bit of that compensation. And the problem why it might not be a big one is because it's just within those areas. Someone also challenged me that, Kevin, I don't, I doubt whether it can go beyond the three counties of Kiambu, parts of Kiambu, largely Kiambu, Nyeri, and Murana. He tells me, I doubt whether it will go to Kirinyaga, it will be a unifying factor to Meru, Tarakaniti, and the other counties. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to read your feedback on this. My take was that the Mau Mau lacks the spark with the regarding. If it was someone else, it would make sense.